you're going to want to practice bucking rivets and you're going to want to practice removing rivets before you begin working on your final project. And since this is a full-size set of plans, we don't actually have to measure on it. We're just simply going to put our piece across here and mark out where the small blank goes. There's a line on this side. Here's a line on this side. We don't need to do a bunch of measuring. All we really need to do is punch on the lines. The stomp shear is called the stomp shear because when you push on it, that brings the blade down. Uh, by the way, make sure your fingers are not anywhere near that blade when you push on it. And when we drill them, everything in here is going to be drilled with a number 40 drill bit. Everything in this area is going to be drilled with a number 30 drill bit. And everything in on this line is going to be drilled with a number 21 drill bit. So everything up here is 40, 30, 21. And then we come back again and we start with 40 on this next line. And then we go to 30 on the next line. So here we see the piece with all the universal head rivets driven. Still have room for our Cherry Max and still have room where we're going to put our plate. Sometimes it helps to manually start the drill with your fingers to uh, keep it from getting out of line. I also need to make sure that I hold the drill straight up and down this way and straight up and down this direction. So this takes a little bit of practice, making sure everything is straight up and down. So here we go, the rest of the holes. Keeping your drill parallel or uh, perpendicular from your workpiece. You'll notice because I've got my workpiece up at an angle so you can see it that my drill is not straight up and down, it's straight up and down compared to the workpiece. If I have to drill from here, my drill is going to be at an angle like this. If I have to drill over here, it's going to come like this. Whatever it is, it stays perpendicular with the workpiece. I also want you to notice that I have a block and I'm drilling onto the block and that's because I will be very angry if you drill onto my table. Don't do that. Use a block. So this happens to be a 3-3, 4-4, and 5-5. It just happened that way. It's not always going to be 3-3, 4-4, and 5-5 but those are the sizes we're going to use. I have the number one rivet in place. It's gonna go on the left side. I'm gonna install two number one rivets, three number two rivets, and a number four rivet. And the reason I'm having you install these different rivets is because I want you to see what happens as different rivets are installed. This particular rivet is a 3-4, and it's a 426, meaning it's a countersunk head. A 3-4, meaning it's size longer than the 3-3s we drove on the other side, but that's because we're going through one more layer of metal. One thing I do need to warn you about though is don't drive rivets in these center ones. Those are for Cherry Max rivets on this project. I'm going to pad the jaws of the vise with blocks of wood to keep from damaging my rivet plate. First time I use any air tool for the day, I want to put one drop of oil in that air tool. Once again, using our wood block to make sure we don't damage my table. I'm 
going to set the strength of my rivet gun. That's about how strong I want this to be to drive number four rivets, which is what I'm going to start with and demonstrate on. Still not enough. I don't think I've got enough strength here. I've got to turn up my gun. Let's try that. Now we should be able to flatten this thing. And the issue with the small plate is we need these holes to match exactly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this, place, this plate right where it goes. And then I'm going to drill a hole from back behind so that it exactly matches the hole that's already there. So I'm going to do this drill. I'm going to drill this spot in. And then I'm going to attach it. I'm going to go ahead and drill the rest of the holes from the back side. And now I need to move to my number four rivets using my number 30 drill bit. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to drill this one in the center and Clico it there. You can never have too many Clicos. Clicos are our friend and they make things outright. Two Clicos will keep it from sliding around, although I'll probably put about three on it. Whenever we disassemble a part, we want to have a good way of making sure we can reassemble it in the same way that it came apart. On this particular one, because of our green marker, or our green uh, paint, it's not hard to figure out how it came apart. But if this were a different one, I'd probably want to put a couple of little marks on it so I'd know exactly where these pieces fit against each other. Notice when I open this up, there's all kinds of chips in between here. And those have got to come out before we rivet it together. Otherwise, we're going to have all kinds of crap caught in the rivet joint. And we don't like crap in the rivet joint. We're going to go ahead and deburr each hole. And then we're going to reassemble this just like we had it before. Now I'm going to reassemble the uh, joint using my Clicos, and I can Clico from both sides. So there's my Clico from this side, but since I'm going to be working on this side, I'm actually going to bring my Clicos in from the other side, and that's going to make it easier to work. And when you're doing your working, you can kind of plan which side is best to have your Clicos come from, as long as you have access to both sides. We never start countersinking without first setting up our tools on a piece of scrap. You'll notice, you'll notice I use a slight rocking motion and that's to make sure I've reached the bottom all the way. You'll also notice that I keep my hand on here to keep it from spinning because if it spins I get much more crap on the paint. There's lots of different sizes of these mushroom sets. Use the biggest one that will fit your work because it's going to try and skate everywhere while we do our actual riveting and we want to do as little skating as possible. You also want to remove any defective ones and replace them before I grade them.